Good evening everybody, welcome to the studio this evening and on tonight's programme, <laughs> I still want to keep saying that, uh, we're going to carry on and finish off using all the uh, the thread uh, for this Kima, uh, Kumahimo disc uh, with uh, Kumahimo, that's a mouthful, Kumahimo braiding, which will then we can then work on turning it into a bracelet or necklace, maybe both if it's long enough or if it's not. I don't know. Might leave that, might leave finishing it until tomorrow. We shall see. But in the meantime, still got some more to do. So I am going to carry on with that. Right, so luckily I left myself last night with an indication with these three and that one up there that this is an excellent uh, break to cut there and then I just carry on. So we should finish in theory fairly quickly with this. Given that we've got to be over halfway through it's the uh, stuff that's just still available on these bobbins. As I mentioned last night, now that they, um, they're all about the same length and relatively short, they're not actually getting tangled up as much with each other as they were earlier, which was a little bit annoying at the start. So you live and learn, keep them short is the answer. So, uh, nice and easy craft to do is this one. Once this is done, and depending on whether we put the ends on or not, we will try doing a beaded um, bracelet, which again will be the first time. Lots of firsts. Now this is surprising as I mentioned, quite relaxing which is a good job I could do with at the moment. It's been somewhat of a busy day today. I wish this had been you know, sort of like one colour or you know, two colours that they're giving you with to actually do this rather than a multicolour thing like this. It looks bright and it looks um, you know, colourful but if I'd realised I think I probably would have wanted to go for uh, you know, a proper, proper design if you like. Two colours, four colours maybe but um, this sort of constantly changing colour. Uh, looks pretty but it's not necessarily sort of something that you might well Mrs. is arrogant out certainly isn't un inclined to wear it.
What's um, a little bit surprising to me, I guess, in a way, is that um, I kind of haven't read the instructions. Well, I did read the instructions, but I already knew how to do this before I started. And that's, um, that's from watching YouTube videos, in a way, but I wasn't looking at it from the point of view of um, learning how to do it on YouTube. It was it did look interesting. And yet I sort of picked it, picked up the, um, the instructions from that without actually having to read them, which is uh, shows you you learn stuff without realising it sometimes. Aldo H, good evening and welcome. And good evening, Moobot. LH, how are you today? How's your cold doing? Hopefully it's gone. If not, sit back, relax and watch the stream. Good and glad to hear it. I think I mentioned something like that the other day, but <laughs> it'd go away eventually. Good. Once it stops bothering you, that's um, that's when you start to forget about it, and that's when it goes quicker than you think. That reminds me, this weekend I get a flu injection. Well, I don't get an injection of flu, I get a vaccine injection. Which hopefully will mean I don't get uh, cold or flu this winter. Day. I'm one step closer to getting some new studio space, which I'm glad. Yeah, hopefully it will work. Claire, good afternoon. Welcome to the studio this evening. Welcome to the moving thread from one place to another show. things going with you Claire oh I'm fine thank you very much I'm a little bit warm here in the studio and I'm kind of wondering if I'm getting a headache but apart from that I am fine had a busy day but uh, as I say hopefully productive in all sorts of ways including maybe getting one step closer to more studio in both senses of the word
since I do use it in somewhat of a play on words. Fuffy Twiglet, good evening, welcome, and not at the moment, uh, Fuffy. I am sort of glad to say. <laughs> I like Junior and all, and I love him being on my knee and all, but not when I'm streaming. And uh, Lady Zara is not around at the moment. It's quite a nice way of putting it, actually, I think. Thank you very much. I uh, just did a takeaway pizza. You just started a business and you're already on the takeaways. Um, I had a supermarket bought pizza for mine. <laughs> so I'm quite alright. Pepperoni. Uh, pepperoni. Something or other. With extra pepperoni probably. I like sort of semi spicy pizzas. Don't like anchovies though. Do not like anchovies. Actually, I don't mind anchovies, I just don't like the bones. Well, that's a good excuse. Who pulled the fuse? They're so rare these days of power cuts that at one time you kind of used to have well you might not remember but I can remember sort of being having candles around and you know a car battery spare charged so that you could at least run an electric light um, so you used to you know, back then you used to have caravans and camping lights that run off 12 volts so Just that the, you know, even because uh, you know, of the camping stuff, of course, you used to have a stove and kettle and you could have a drink, mind you, of course. We had a gas cooker, so you could still have a drink, hot drink, but power cuts these days are so unusual and rare. Okay. I think, I think I can remember only now, in the recent years, only having about uh, two. Um, most of them would be uh, two. Yeah. Oh, and I think we've po possibly had some overnight because you sort of come in and find the computers off or something like that. Or get up in the morning, but of course you haven't noticed. I've only had two uh, affecting us on an evening once. Back in the dark old days, though, I did. I did. Uh, uh, we did start thinking about getting a small generator just in case. Okay, more flowers. More, uh, more botanical, Britannia. Oh yes, Britannia. I've been watching Minecraft. You say, Britannia, a botanical painting. <laughs> you know what you could do, uh, Fuffy Twiglet, is take any random 100 words out of the chat one of these days. Since it ranges anything from metaphysics to science fiction and um, and space exploration, you could probably get something out of it. A lower hit and overhead kit? Wow. Well, presumably, I was about to say, presumably they hit the pole rather than the cable, but you never know, I guess, with tall, tall lorry. Uh, well, I'm assuming you got your power back actually because you're watching me, uh, but you could be doing that on a phone, I guess. Uh, 
I'm guessing they didn't take too long to repair it or put something in its place anyway. Food. <laughs> Lorry drivers are supposed to note the the uh, the word supposed to be able to um, not only know the height of their vehicle but to be able to judge that height so they don't go under low bridges and things like that. Obviously, low cables don't necessarily apply. Oh no, power! Oh yeah. Well, don't let your battery go too flat, uh, Claire. I appreciate you watching me, but... Uh, next thing. Yeah, I bet they're getting a bit cool, aren't they? If you've got a gas cooker, um, cut water bottles. you've got a spare phone battery. I've got an iPhone. No such thing. Um, oh, electric. Uh, you see, electric ovens. It just makes a snake sleepy, doesn't it? 14. Wow. Ooh, excuse me. Don't know if it's the thought of being cold that makes me sleepy or what, but... What's you just Jessup? Good evening and welcome back to the studio. You're only allowed one A fluffy twiglet. I don't want any. I don't mind them, but I don't want any. When we go on holiday, the, the cats, of course, going to, I won't say kennels, but uh, catteries. Do you have such a thing for snakes? Do you have sort of places that will look after snakes? Uh, now then, just Jessup, that tickles me with the, um, with the thought of answering, who are you talking to? Um, but... I'm not too bad, thank you. And how are you today? You'd like to have an animal, Elder H. Don't you have a brother or sister? doing some work I would say at this time of night but I can't remember where you are just Jessup <laughs> yeah I had goldfish a long time ago for a while actually we had um, goldfish for a, short, for a few days here once um, one of our cats brought two in and they, um, they survived for about a week. 
Atle oh, okay. Yeah, so at this time of night, just Jessup. actually work it's college work okay all you lot going to school you see uh, I'm glad I don't have to these days still have to do learning and training and things like that but uh, not formal school so I don't often get homework as such other than the fact that I work from home but So I suppose technically I get more homework than the rest of you. I do eight hours a day of the stuff. It's starting to get that way, LDLH. It's, um, it's a bit variable at this time of the year, but it's on its way. You can have warm days and cold days, but uh, it is starting to uh, cool off, at least in England. That's right. I just have lots of other things to do from home once I get here. Mm. Unfortunately, it's not a um, around here. It's not a sit back with your feet up sort of thing after work. Well, uh, just Jessup, well, sort of. I started, started it last night. No. Uh, yeah, I started it last night. Um, so probably because you've not been, you wouldn't have seen the new one I was doing just before that, which was uh, beading. Um, just thought I'd try them out, see uh, whether I like them, whether I can, you know, the, the results are useful, can be used for things, make things out of. <laughs> oh, sorry, you have for free. <laughs> but there again, I, I, ju I just ban, I don't time out. Well, not very often anyway. I shall leave it to you next time. <laughs> it just tweaked my, uh, you know, do this. No. See, these people don't realise if they come in and have a chat and tell us something about things, then, then I might let them advertise, but... Ah, that was a ban. I don't often mess about um, just Jessup. And uh, and you're quite welcome to also just do, just ban uh, for free if you want. I don't uh, I don't mind. I'll very I very rarely time anybody out because usually they're just.
they just keep coming back and then you, you ban them eventually anyway. Oh yes, power. Well, as a broadcaster, you see, I have that power. Oh, you mean power? <laughs> well, I'm assuming you mean power as opposed to power. <laughs> uh, uh, well, the snakes will appreciate it. You might get a second, uh, uh, a second chance, just Jessup, provided you don't do it on purpose, or you know, you're not. I might, uh, I or Fluffy Twiggler, or uh, might just time you out. But um, if you do, you might perhaps hope that Fluffy Twiggler beats me to it. project is going to be another um, well it's kind of combination of both really it's be another uh, braiding uh, but with beads and we're gonna we got another kit to try uh, which is it's Kumahimo braiding but uh, it, it has uh, beads on on the braid as you do it so and that's uh, that's just sat just behind me whether we get onto that tonight I'm not sure um, well, indeed, um, just Jessup. I, it is. Uh, I mean, it's a bit easier, as you can see. I can almost do this without looking at it. I don't. Re well, whilst I am sort of concentrating on it, I don't have to be very careful about you know, placing a pen down very carefully or scratching a, you know, a mark in exactly the right place with exactly the right pressure. Um, and I've got no sharp knives um, waving around to uh, or, or sharp uh, uh, chisels to get uh, um, caught on or you know jab myself with. Even the beading, actually, which is you know it's it's an easy kind of got to concentrate a little bit on that. So this one certainly does have that ability, but there again, that you know to some extent there's. Yeah, you just keep seeing this disc going round and round and round and there's not not a lot of variation compared with um, with the other things where pictures or you know patterns are being developed you actually can't really see the pattern um, and even if you could it's just a piece of uh, rope um, yeah let's concentrate how am I making this um, I am making it as long as these threads go basically uh, Claire, um, in th well, there was the kit was supposed to be long enough in theory for a bracelet and a necklace. Um, the estimated length that they tell you for a bracelet and a necklace, a uh, uh, cord that you need, uh, uh, the original thread cord, whatever it is. Um, was shorter than it supplied so I don't know whether there's going to be enough for both um, if there is I'm going to make both uh, but it'll just be cut in the middle then um, and that sort of saves wasting thread taking it off and messing about and putting it back on so make it in one piece whip both ends cut it with something sharp and then uh, you know, turn it into a bracelet or a necklace. I'm not sure Mrs. Aragon is interested in wearing it as a, ne a necklace, but um, if it if it'll um, 
If there's enough, then we'll do that. What's weighing down the other end? Nothing at all, um, just Jessup. There was, uh, that's on the end of it there, just to hold it when it, when we started. Um, so, I have suspect it's, it's got enough, it, it, just the way of making it makes it go down through the, um, through the hole in the middle. But I, what I am doing is I'm just pulling it slightly with my two fingers underneath just to keep a little bit of downwards pressure on it just so that it then uh, forms yeah, forms the, the square easier I suppose I could put a weight on it uh, and you can actually well I suppose you can buy them you can make them as well just as easily um, something like um, a bulldog clip or uh, crocodile clip something like that with a little bit of weight on the end yeah, a small bag of coins something like that would be uh, more than enough do I have a fan? yeah of course I do aren't you a f <laughs> aren't you a fan? Yes, I've got a fan running. You, you, you're watching my hair blow all over the place, I imagine. Or you can hear it. I'll turn it off for a bit. It's a little bit warm in the studio, so I might turn it back on a little bit. It's just sit underneath the desk. Yeah, sometimes I um, I do read words sideways, so to speak. I'll interpret them sideways, as I call it. And thank you very much for that vote of confidence, Fluffy Twiddler. And this is going to be a necklace and a uh, bracelet. I'm going to need about 22 inches in total, minimum. A bit more than that would be useful. <laughs> well, you mean this stuff isn't fashionable? I'm shooting it, so just depends where I've got the fan. Uh, I, I just blow air underneath the desk, and that's usually enough to keep things cool or feel cool. Obviously, the fan doesn't have any effect in actually cooling air, as I keep saying. It just makes you feel cooler. I've got such fine flyaway hair, you see. She's actually true, it's really fine with my hair. Why is that just Jessup? Is it just the coding or or the or the idea? Anybody who doesn't know scratch is a computer language. 
which I know nothing about actually. It's supposed to be an, uh, an easy one, relatively speaking, to learn a beginner's language, but uh, I know nothing about it. I know it's um, it's sort of uh, what say comes on the Raspberry Pi, but it's part of the the um, their, their learning system for the Raspberry Pi. And what's this game about? Or are you um, maintaining confidentiality until it's launched, uh, just Jessup? Yeah, drag and drop. Visual coding. Reminds me, we've got I've got some sponge pie puddings in the in the fridge to eat at some point, like chocolate sponge pudding and something like that. Uh, Captain Derby, good evening. Ah, okay, thank you. The avoid things while moving down a, a canyon uh, game. Sort of idea. I did that, well I've done that game on just about every computer I've had, all that sort of game. My first computer was a Commodore Pet, the second one was one I built myself. And all the games fit into a quarter K, that's a quarter kilobyte, it's not a megabyte or gigabytes or anything, it's a quarter kilobyte of memory. I used to have things like asteroids and um, actually a doom like game, Dungeons and Dragons type game on there as well, in the same amount of memory. If you want a link, you'll have to have a permit to do that, um, just Jessup, otherwise, you'll get timed out. There you go. By the way, I think, uh, Fuffy Twiglet, you have the ability to do a permit as well, by the way. I'm not sure, so if you want to test it at some point. Um, That's uh, yeah. Okay, I give up. <laughs> That's quite clever. The way thing, the way the way things move around here is quite clever. It's not detecting the hits yet, then. <laughs> Uh, that one. Let's move it around.
Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I it yeah, it's I like building programs using sort of that rapid prototyping, which is you know, do a bit at a time and keep testing it. And it's games or programs. So. What you have so far looks quite good. It's a sort of simple concept that has people playing things like that for hours and hours and hours. I didn't know I'd got this much thread left. I've been doing this for an hour. Oh, we, and this is actually sort of three hours long now. Which in itself is surprising. You know, how long does a... What's that got to be? Probably almost two, almost two feet. Mm -mm. Almost two feet of braid tech to make and you wouldn't sort of think three hours. If you want to, uh, um, just yes, up. Let's. Um, there you go. Yeah, but that's uh, recognizing that you're breaking things and then refactoring all the code and stuff. Yeah, that, that's a, um, a common requirement. Once you once you work out where things are going, then you can structure things better. <laughs> it's a no name yet project. Okay. Well, I like the green um, the green background. Okay. Well, easy. <laughs> I like the little eyes. Okay, let's get hit on purpose just to see what happens. Okay. And a restart. Watch your um, watch your colours. Um. Oh, I see. You go invisible as well. Uh, what watch your colours for things like text on uh, on the background, uh, just Jessup, because of um, people that that may well be colour blind in various ways. Uh, and even even for me, and I'm not um, that that initial countdown. I, I, I know you uh, were were trying to fade it out, but the colours made it look a little um, difficult to read, and it wasn't so much a fade out as me sort of going, uh, "What do I need to? Uh, what you know, have I missed something? I can't quite read it," as opposed to recognising it as a fade out. That yeah, looks good. I'm assuming, well, I was about to say, I'm assuming you're going to uh, put some sort of lives in it, but uh, it's just got a single life. Don't quite understand the, the count, but um, I'm sure that'll come. Uh, and I've done that, so now I can go on with this. I didn't see any of the strobe effects. The um, thing going invisible was a little bit... 
what on earth's going on here? <laughs> clever, uh, clever idea. So when it's invisible, is it still there or is it uh, just disappear? Gonna be getting near the end of this thread now. So you've got to guess, guess, guess where it is. Yeah. <laughs> now that's getting evil, <laughs> inverting the controls. Clever, but evil. tweaks my um, uh, that, that tweaks my sense of humor a little bit uh, Claire it's kind of like um, what is it about reading that you can't believe go on you gonna tell me it's what 500 pounds no you, you you're more surprised than that it's got to be about 700. And does it look worth that? Ah, I see, you're going to make me have a look for myself. <laughs> I wasn't far out. <laughs> off now we're just about out of the thread some are longer than others why should that be the case I don't know how much these things are worth but I'm not sure I'd want to pay that much No, no, it's just um, just psychology, um, Captain Derby. When somebody goes, uh, you can't believe the price. Yeah, and, yeah, and when when uh, Claire gave that three hundred, it had to be it had to be a significant addition. Makes me wonder what I'm doing, what what I'm doing wrong when I'm selling some of the jewellery for like sort of twenty pounds and thirty pounds. Oh no, there is um, well, true, just Jessup, but there wasn't much chance of that. Not uh, not for this, but uh, and there is a significant amount of work in that, but. Hmm. Well, the, uh, I guess given uh, given the other prices, then it's probably likely to sell. 
And it gives you a target though, doesn't it, Claire? Um, it's black paper cut out, uh, just Jessup, on the background and framed. It is what it looks like. <laughs> yep. The um the odd thing though, uh, Claire, and I, and I know it's um. It, it's not as easy as it looks, but it doesn't look that hard. And, and I know it's, it, it's harder than it looks, it always is. But I suppose that's the, that's the thing about it. But it, it doesn't, you know, as long as you've got a sharp scalpel, it doesn't look like it ought to be that hard to do. Surgical scalpels out that hard to obtain, though. That's precisely what that is. Uh, it's just wasn't bought as a surg well, surgical scalpels these days are plastic, so but that it is a surgical uh, blade that's on the end. It just it just has never been sterilised, which they do by gamma irradiating them. Oh yeah, no, I, I don't mean to disparage it, um, Claire. Um, I know it's, I know it's not going to be as easy as it looks. That's where the skill comes in, in making it look that way. Um, I actually get mine from a station. Um, a drawing supplier basically. I bet I got a large box of them so because I use quite a lot um, if I'm when, I, when I'm uh, airbrushing if I use um, masking then I'm always cutting the masking because um, I'm, I'm working on paper I've got to have an extremely sharp uh, blade to cut the masking without cutting into the paper so um, I, I, uh, I use the surgical blades for that and I, I go through sort of one or two every uh, every painting so I've got a, a large box of the things oh. these things um, this box was was full, a uh, hundred blades in in that box, and it's it's half empty. But just Jessup, I've been doing things like uh, create model making for years. Scalpel blades are, or craft blades. Well, scalpel blades are sharper, but craft blades, scalpel blades, I've got. All sorts of things all over the place. Um, when you buy a box like that, it probably works out about 10p a blade. So that's, that's probably about 10, 10 to 20 pound, I think, for the box. I'm not sure. Um, I haven't done any airbrushing for a while, so I've not been using the um, the blades to, to buy any more. can't actually remember what I paid for them. Yeah, there you go, about £10.
Yep. They're a lot more expensive if you buy just a packet of five or something like that. You go to a model shop and buy uh, a small quantity. When you buy whole packs, it's um, uh, significantly cheaper. Actually, cutting paper is about one of the worst things you can do with a blade. Uh, they go blunt really quickly. Yes, yeah, so if you want any minor surgery, <laughs> got the tools. Oh, easily. I um, I've hurt myself with them. I once um, once dropped a scalpel. Now they are designed uh, for the back end to be heavier than the front, so that they spin in in the air and um, land base first. Well, this time it caught my leg on the way down, and uh, it landed point first right through my foot. Or me toe actually. Through a pair of slippers. Oh yes, you can hurt yourself quite a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, the cats are a little bit more um, it's debatable what's sharper, scalpel or cat claws. The thing is, scalpels do not actively go after you. Wouldn't help necessarily with a scalpel, um, just Jessa. It's um, it's pointy enough to go right through in a jabbing motion, rather than a, uh, yeah, it'll stop a slice. Another jab. One reason why um, chain mail basically. Um, Went out of fashion, shall we say, because arrows would go through. And so will small rapier like swords. <laughs> yeah, Kevlar armour is what you're after these days for that. Although that in itself is still um, slice resistant more than, than uh, jab resistant. But its fibres are finer than chain mail is so it's, uh, it does tend to work better. Right, this is almost done. I'm just being a little bit of a cheapskate getting as much as I can out of this thread. They all started exactly the same length, and yet some of them are longer than others now. So obviously there's different tension being applied, somehow. It's not something I've done actively. <laughs> You've got a false feel off Amazon for 99p. Oh, okay. Right, well, I think that's about it for that one, but as I was mentioning, they're all different lengths. No idea how they've got like that. Let's see how long this is. 
Is it long enough for a necklace and a bracelet? So, well, it's obviously definitely long enough for a bracelet because we've got the seven inches there. So, 15. So it's long enough for a necklace. Uh, and this is going to be 30 inches. Oh, well, no, I can't add up, can I? I said 15 and 13, 14 inches. So, uh, 29. So, yes, it is long enough. So, my thing at the start where what the tell will you stay where you're going ruler at the start of this where it sort of said you need I don't know, 36 inches of thread or something for a seven inch bracelet and, and then uh, if you sort of multiplied that up to what a necklace would be about 16 and 17 inches there just wasn't enough thread misleading there is enough for both apparently now what you're supposed to do with this because as Somebody mentioned just here, I'm not quite sure who. Um, it is slightly hollow. Um, and the tension's a little bit variable. You're supposed to sort of just work it a little bit. Which closes up the slight hollow in the middle. Incidentally making it longer. Voodoo magic. <laughs> that explains a lot. What explains a lot? Voodoo magic. Was it could do. This kind of looks like it would have if they'd done it. If we got the right threads, colour threads, there's kind of a spiral wrap in it. Not sort of a spiral wrap. So it kind of looks like you know, and the gold one goes that way, and the green one, light yeah, you know, the light green goes that way. The blue is going this way. Um, it kind of looks like it put, could produce an interesting pattern, but because of the shifting colours, you can't really see it very much. Um, back down, yeah, because the colours change, you sort of lose it every so often. But just on here, it just really the blue and the green and gold just sort of stand out to each other. So, well, I have seen all sorts of things. I've seen people say just take it off there, uh, and uh, but it could unravel. And so, I see also I've seen you know, some say take it off and then do this to just stretch it slightly. Uh, equally, I've seen a lot of other people who have done this, who appear to be ac accomplished people, shall we say, who actually tie it off. And I think I'm going to do that. So they sort of... Um, take opposites, I suppose. don't know if it actually matters. As long as I don't try and tie with the last two that I moved, um, because that way they I don't bevel it. Do I actually want to tie two knots or one knot? I'm just going to tie one knot. Uh, what should I tie next? That one. So I am just tying a single half inch or other hand knot. Pulling it tight. This should stop it over unraveling. There will be glue going on the end of it, so And then the final two. Kind of looks like a sea anemone or 
some sort of uh, I don't know intergalactic squid a bit like that stick a ball on the yeah oh and the cats do chase it well we used to use, we used to have pampas grass not anymore but we used to have pampas grass and you could pick one of those things off and just cats would chase that around for hours Oh, <laughs> Claire, that's um, that's not un for me. That's not unusual. Halfway through the day, I cannot be tired and close my eyes and got feels nice and wake up to wake up half an hour later. Even when I'm at work, sometimes I'm not tired beforehand and I'm not tired afterwards. Um, Yesterday, about 10 minutes to the stream, I just closed my eyes and I woke, woke up again just before the stream starts. So you almost didn't get um, get a stream yesterday. So there's the end. It's a bit like, well, it's a bit like a cat of nine tails. And it's a cat of eight tails. Oh, there it is. A wrap around bracelet perhaps for lens. Turn it as a bracelet. Colourful bracelet. <laughs> sort of well, sort of a necklace, I guess. <laughs> you could even leave the tassels on the end. Doesn't really suit me very much, I don't think. No, I will actually just mention now that I've cut the got it off the board. Let's see exactly if it is 22 inches long. I've also stretched it slightly. So, 15 was to about there. Yeah, 30 inches. So oh, it is possible. So um, what I should do now is um, do some whipping. I wonder if the instructions tell me anything about this. This is that's a, I believe they did yesterday. So I'm going to just have a look, and I'll put that hat back on the camera. Camera's moved a little bit. Let me tilt it back up. I don't like this camera. I don't like its stand, to say the least. I'll put that hat back on it. So you're just in the shade out the glare. Out the glare. There we go. I thought you'd actually finished, uh, Claire. You're getting the last bit of money in just in case. Right. Wrap a piece of thread around the end of the braid. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. And then glue it. Mm. Yeah, well, it just be a simple necklace. I've not got any embellishments to put on the end at the moment. Handed it in, you've got another nine weeks. Oh, that's going to go really slowly. Uh, no, well, potentially Aldo H. It's uh, Purple Planet who 
we'll do royalty free music and you can actually license it for volume so it might be from a game but there are there are themes in there that you keep almost half recognizing um, I do I, I hear quite a few as I'm listening uh, that it, it resembles things like um, there's there's one there's a theme in one of the songs that's very similar to um, something you hear in Men in Black and things like that. Uh, last day, seventeenth of December. Uh, I was about to say that's my last day as well, but that's because I go on. I I think that's my last day before my Christmas break. I have two weeks off over Christmas. But I have to go back. Not that I mind. And especially this year, I won't mind at all. Um, so, whip this. And. Oh, excuse me. I think I'll have to go to bed early tonight. Which is good because the um, the person I usually watch streaming after I finish streaming, apart from 3D Blog, uh, isn't going to be streaming tonight. Which is good. It means I won't be up to watch him. So uh, I don't actually have anything to whip with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to nick some from my beading. Got some thread for that. No reason why I can't whip with that. It's four pound tense and the glue will actually hold it eventually. Um, so let's see how well I suppose I'm going to use these um, oops not the jump ring I'll just put that back in its uh, thing for the moment. Now that's a problem. These, these are... Um, where's those jump rings? There we go. These are uh, silver plated. Not only on my jewellery I use sterling silver. But this is just a, a sort of a practice piece. So I'm going to use these. And since I know Mrs. Zara gonna, isn't going to wear that, Lady Zara, I like that word by the way, yeah, Fuffy Tweedler, I'll tell her. Um, since I don't think she'll be wearing these very often, if at all, um, I'll use the, uh, I'll use the silver plate. You could almost use that as a safety chain more than, uh, for a bracelet, more than, uh, more than actually what it is, which is kind of an extender. Who do I watch after your stream? Apart from 3D Block, a guy called Matt Peddleston. Uh, streaming, um, well you know just. Uh, streaming um, Train Simulator. Which one? This one? The, um, yeah. Not sure which one I prefer for the bracelet. That, or these, which then obviously will have the, um, the Lobster Claw clasp on. I've, um, for the jewellery, I've kind of experimented a little bit with the T-bars uh, as opposed to the lobster claw. I might actually have a uh, an experiment with some of the box clasps at one point. But for a necklace, this is uh, is nice because when you fasten it behind your neck, you can't see much. Of course, it's interesting. I see a lot of, or I have seen a lot of people struggling to fasten necklaces behind the neck. Don't quite know, especially simple ones like this one. They just spin it around where they can see it, and then put it. Down. <laughs> yeah, a hook and clasp. Yeah, I, I quite like that. I've, I would actually had a look last night to see if I could find something like this in sterling silver, and I can't. But this is this is plate. It's it's too light. In fact, it might even be aluminium. Plated. It's really light. Could be tin. Yeah. 
Well, these, of course, then the the then a jump ring goes in the end, and the chain or the the um, clasp. Quite, they're quite a neat end of those. They've been you know, nicely made. I keep looking out for sort of nice fastenings. I've got. Um, somewhere around here I've got a magnetic one to try as well I'm a little bit wary of magnetic clasps though just because they hold really well but you know you can just catch something and not realize the magnets split and you've lost uh, lost whatever it is I keep think keep feeling if I use a magnetic clasp what I ought to do is put a safety chain on it um, so I think uh, we'll go with that for the for the necklace end, and this for the uh, um, bracelet end. So we'll take this out. I've got a nice um, see what I've got around here somewhere. I've got a nice tea bar. Where is it? a nice tea bar but that's not the one I'm looking for which highly reminds me of um, Star Wars that is not the tea bar you are looking for there it is Nice and uh, well, I think it's quite a nice tuba. Camera's upside down, isn't it? So there we go. The heart shaped tuba. I have a few lying around, uh, just Jessup. Um, all sterling silver. Uh, not not many because Stelly Silver is not that cheap to have lying around. So I think about half a dozen um, uh, lobster claw clasps and, and just a couple of uh, a couple of tea bars. I've got a nice sort of twisted one, so it sort of shines. There. I shall put those back away before they get um, lost. Lady Zara does tend to um, go through. Um, uh, if, she, if she was to wear this stuff, um, it would probably revert to its copper, which is usually what silver is plated on top of, within about an hour or two. They just disappears on her. Right, I've taken... No, I haven't. I was in the process of taking that off the end of the thread. And it shouldn't unravel. See, when you start doing jewellery just so things like um, clasps start to interest you greatly. <laughs> so that should just go in there and glue. And that one would be, that end would be done. So that's what I'm precisely going to do, I think. I'm not going to whip that end. I don't think I need to. I am going to change my glasses so I can see better. You start by all sorts of things, you know, like um, uh, 
like uh, you know, hair clips so that you can do things like uh, where is it gone I have a, uh, I've put it I've put it somewhere now yeah. that's interesting where have I put it oh it's there yeah Hair clips, so I can put like I've got like a little, a little flower, which could then go on the uh, go on the hair clip as a um, sort of hair decoration, or um, on a like a brooch clip. And if I get some bigger leaves, uh, it could go around the outside as well. Anyway, glue, some glue in this box somewhere. There it is. Cocktail stick. Yeah, yeah, the. What was that? Protect clothing and all surfaces. Oh, all work surfaces. That's good, because I was going to glue something. I didn't want to protect that. And using a well ventilated area. Is this well ventilated? Well, it'll do, I guess. Well, I just have to experiment a little bit with actually uh, fastening them. I think I probably want to get some um, beading wire uh, to fasten them, but then they'll go in the store, Claire. Point tube away from face and body. Do not oh, sneeze. I said sneeze. Squeeze the tube while opening. I was about to say, how do you not squeeze a tube? You've got to hold it. How do you not squeeze while you're opening it? Uh, anyway, I'm guessing we take that off there first. Get rid of that. Oh. Ah, oh, there we go. There's usually something on the end. So you've got a, a tube, which is, you know, as these things are, like toothpaste tubes, flexible metal. You're supposed to hold it while pushing that into there without squeezing. Hmm. I know what happens if you do squeeze, it does go everywhere, but is that it? Is that the sum total of the whole? I suppose it is. Right. Of course, if you squeeze it out and you push that on there, does that mean it glues that to the... Oh, yeah, never mind. Tiger tail with some pinch clips. Mm. New terminology to me, Claire. I shall have a look afterwards. Right, uh, what did I want to do? Oh, yes, I wanted a uh, cocktail stick. Extremely useful things, cocktail sticks. So I put some on the end and I put some in there. Oh, okay, fishing wire, yeah. Well, I suppose fishing wire would work as well, yes. Yeah, it's like this stuff, this nylon, this fire, this is fire line, a fairly short fire line. Is fishing is a fishing uh, line manufacturer, um, but uh, it may or may not be cheaper <laughs> to buy his fishing line. So, yes, I said never thought about that. Uh, you're to uh, you call them pinch you're talking about crimp connectors. Yeah, crimp beads. Yeah, that's that's what I was gonna do. So it's it's the wire the, the wire I think uh, beading wire is, is plastic coated. You wrap, you know, wrap it around the back of the the flower and through the hole and around a few times and then uh, a crimping bead to hold it in place. A 
I don't want to use the plastic cord because it, if that um, metal hair clip is in any way sharp it'll cut through it. <laughs> Do not squeeze the tube while opening. Okay, well I'm squeezing the tube now it is opened and nothing's coming out. Yeah. Oh, I figured it probably would. Um, yeah, I used to go fishing quite a bit, which is why, you know, which is why, one of the things I was while I was doing the the sewing with it on the peyote piece, I kept calling it line rather than thread, for, for precisely that reason. There, I think I see this starting to come out. God, it's taking a bit of force to do it though. Probably because it's a gel. I'm doing this, you know what, and I should first of all have put it in the um in here, because now I can't put that down on the desk. Fifteen pound line, eh? Yeah, it just needs to be thin enough. Um, that stuff's four pound braided line, but so put some of that in there. Then I shall spread it around. the bits out of the way and bet this I can't get this in here now without getting glue all over the outside oh dear. that was a little bit silly of me I should have whipped this oh well it will go in I know it will go in because we will make it go in and then I'll clean up the outside there we go. It's a gel. It's a, it's a cyanacrylate adhesive, which means that it won't go. It won't go hard until or it won't go off until there's a lack of oxygen. So that stuff on the outside is still liquid. Yeah, you got to learn. First time I've put one of these things on the end, so you know what? I've got to learn. I've got a little bit on my fingers. I've used this this sort of adhesive many times, so I'm quite familiar with the adhesive, but. Um, I've even got some accelerator just up there if I need it to, so I can always spray a little bit of accelerator on it and it will uh, it will set immediately. But there we go, that's on. So now, turn that away but I needn't bother. Um, now that ends on. Uh, let me put that on there. Not that any is likely to leak out, but we will make this because of the extender. I can make this about seven inches long. And if I do it using the inch measurement. Uh, so it'd be about there. So, fire line. Yeah, there's.
about there. Actually, what I'm going to do is tie a knot. I wouldn't normally tie a knot when I'm whipping, but this doesn't really make much difference. This feels really weird because now when I, you know, whipping is the sort of thing I did on fishing rods and things like that and um, you always try it to be as neat as possible here it doesn't matter just wrap it round as tight as you can basically which kind of feels alien to me and as I don't happen to have scissors around, earlier said surgical scalpel comes in useful. Of about that. Come on, on the blade, not down the side of it. Thank you. And I'm doing this off firm, aren't I? So I shall move the camera in a moment. Come on back down there. Right. And now tie a knot or two. Of course, if I was whipping, what I would have been doing at this point is using the thread I started with, the thread I started with, with a loop on it to pull this through and underneath the whipping I've just done, which would be the neat way of finishing it off. In this particular case it's going to get hidden in the clasp, so who cares? All I care about is trying to get that through that loop, which I just can't get hold of. There we go. It's um, it's not people, uh, just Jessup. It's bots. Oh, I've got. A, mm. Nah, more bother. Uh, okay, so I've put one length on. I tell you, let me do this the easy way. I'm going to cut th that much, that much off. This is where I find out I haven't cut quite enough off, but. Mm. Yeah, I don't give you a great deal. Indeed, uh, just Jessup, they are indeed. Now then, I do this um, just well. I'm going to put ends on it, um, Kitsum, um, Kitsuken, and then once I've put ends on it, I am going to do another one, but with beads. But maybe not tonight. That's probably tomorrow night. This took actually longer than I expected. Right, let me now get you out of the way. 
and whip this red. And just whip it, just winding this um, thread around. Basically, I'm winding more than these, but it just holds the ends tight so that when you cut through, they don't go all over the place and unravel. That's plenty, I think. And I might as well take the easy way out since I've got enough thread there to tie a knot. I will do so. And this, once this has got glue on it, it'll hold in place anyway. Cillian, good evening. <laughs> oh dear. Well, that's a good excuse for an early night. I should get my cutters out to do this. Anyway, let's do that. That helps if I use the sharp end of the scalpel. Do the long ends. Easier to do it now than it is to do it afterwards. Have a good evening, uh, Claire. Look forward to seeing you again in the future. I hope you get your power on again soon for the uh, for the snakes. Keep them warm. What am I doing with the clear strands? What I'm doing with the clear strands, uh, Kitsukan, is they're wrapped around the braiding. So what, they, what, I'm, what I'm about to do is what I'm about to do is there's, there's clear strands there and there. I'm about to cut in the middle there and cut it right through. And if I didn't have these on, it would unravel and I wouldn't be able to get it into the end. So wrapping these around it, what it does is it holds everything in its place. Right, I'll then put some glue on it. The glue will ultimately hold it in place. So this is kind of like a temporary thing that's permanently in place. Um, and then um, I'll put the uh, put the cap on, and we'll have a finished bracelet. So this is the moment of truth, really, because this is a point. Because I haven't got a good pair of scissors, I'm going to use a surgical scalpel, which isn't really very sharp, because uh, it could do with a new blade. So I'm going to cut through this. Deep breath. Do I really want to do this? <laughs> We're going to find out. This is all about experimentation and learning, so we do want to do this. I am cutting through this. I'm taking it slowly. I'm letting the blade do the work. So I'm not pushing hard or 
not, not really pushing that much at all and it's cutting through slowly I don't want to start sort of forcing it and disrupting the um, potentially disrupting those knots and things the whipping I've just done equally at this point I also don't want to cut into my desk so yes I did turn that blade over I could get a wood board out I guess and uh, there we go that would have been slightly better with uh, something a bit sharper or a pair of scissors, but there we go. So that should then go inside of there, like that. If I make sure that little thread goes in there as well. A bit of adhesive. Ooh, the suspense. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, yeah, something yes. Make it shorter. It's a bracelet. <laughs> I suppose it could have been a, a, tw a thirty inch wrap around bracelet. some glue in the end cap which I can put down I'll put some glue on the end of here but not too close to the end so just on the end here that will do I think and then this goes over the top of there like that make sure it's down properly I've got a little bit of glue just spilled out so I shall just wipe that off being careful not to get on my fingers and there is finished bracelet. We'll do that the next bit in a minute. Sorry about that. So there's then just a couple of jump rings to go on the end. I'll leave that a little bit to uh, that one set. That one should set very quickly shortly. Nearly. I've got this here onto which that goes I think what I'm going to do with this is cut it if I can cut it a little bit closer See, scissors scissors might actually be a bit better for that let me just see if I can get a small sharp pair of scissors I shall be back in a moment Didn't have to go very far because they were. <laughs> I thought they were elsewhere, but I found them straight away. Let me just trim this end. Okay. 
It's just to follow all the placements there. Now then that end will go on there and push in. And the little plastic ripping will disappear, so that's fine. So we'll now put that end on there with some glue. We then whip the other end. And do exactly the same thing there. Inside of that is glued. This bit of the music um, reminds me of a little bit of something from I think one of the Men in Black films when they're doing that. Um, I think it's the sec second film, I think it is. Put it on a little bit. Just make sure it's in place. Hold it for a couple of seconds. With a bit of pressure on it, that helps it exclude the oxygen or the air and then it makes it set. We'll leave that like that. So what I'm just going to do now is put the top on this while I prepare the other end. Unfortunately it's not a case of here's one I did earlier because you've just seen me do the one I did earlier. So let's cut the end off of here or the ends. I don't need them this long. And they'll just get in the way at the moment so this is where I go oops I've forgotten something that I needed these other for but too bad there we go get rid of them over there now then I have some more maybe enough line here I'm going to whip the end of this because I will be cutting it quite up against the edge and I don't want it to unravel. So I'm using a very fine line, which is maybe see-through to you guys, I'm afraid, or invisible, but luckily I can see it. Otherwise I'd have one heck of a job of tying these knots. I'm still going to have one heck of a job because I've just untied the knot I tied. Things like this are frustrating. This is when you need patience. It's like when I was trying to thread the needle early uh, yesterday for the bead work. You need patience to do that. Put another another hitch half hitch on this like that. Then what we do is basically just wrap this around the end a few times without getting it caught. Pulling it quite tight. And then we will tie the end. Which really just holds this in place until the glue gets on it. And then the glue will hold it in place. Do 
doing something like this, what I should do is see if I can find my old fishing forceps. And then I'll be able to get hold of the, um, the thread, like that. Just like the doctors do. But it would be useful if I could remember how they tied knots with forceps, but there we go. Oh gee, thanks, Justin. <laughs> Sorry, you tweak my uh, you tweak my um, irony or sense or, or sense of humour sometimes. Right. Come on, cut. Thank you. Get rid of that. Right, that one ain't tangled up with pussy cats. And that end. In fact, why am I using a scalpel to do that when I have a pair of scissors? Uh, you're probably after me doing a permit, aren't you? Just there you go. Right, so snip that and that, right, and we'll get rid of these ends, and then we'll see if we need to trim them any shorter. Which I suspect I will. I'm almost certain I will just to get this on the end of it. Yeah, otherwise the whipping will show up, which I thought it might. I'll just untangle the end a little bit. And careful not to get too close to the, uh, the plastic whipping, otherwise it'll slip off. And if it slips off, it'll unravel. So, was that enough? Yep, yeah, that's enough. Okay, I shall have a look in a moment, uh, just Jessup. Um, we won't play the music for long enough, um, hopefully for it to be picked up anyway. Because whilst I trust you, um, in theory I would have to put some sort of information uh, to show why it's copyright free. in order to satisfy Twitch. Okay, so that's some in the end of there, which we will just swirl around. Not that you need much of it, but clean the end of the cocktail stick. That way I can reuse the cocktail stick. Cheapskate, you see, and even reusing a bit of giving in the cameras over there because it's usually where it is. Uh, even though it's just a bit of wood, I do reuse them. When I'm working uh, in airbrushing, I use the cocktail sticks as mixing sticks as well. And most of the time, I let them dry out and, uh, and reuse them, even for mixing paints. So. And screw that in a little bit and hold it in place for a few seconds. I know it's 10 o'clock, but I'm going to finish these two, so I'm not going to stop. I'm going to put the, um, now that I've given the bracelet time to uh, to set, I'm going to put the, um, the jump rings and the clasp on. Before I finish, so I shall leave that to set. This is about the most untidiest bit of 
uh, of crafting I've ever done. Um, let me put my let me let me untidy. I don't like being untidy, so I am going to tidy a little. Let's put the keeper on the fire line. Put that back in that box. Put that box to one side where it doesn't belong, but it doesn't want to be there. And if that sticks to the box, doesn't matter. Let's take the jump rings out. Let me get yeah. Let me get rid of the rubbish. Do not like an untidy workspace. You wouldn't think that from the rest of the desk, but I don't like an untidy workspace. Right, I can empty that box into the bin. So we'll put the bits in as well. disc in there ready for tomorrow night along with the glue and these eight bobbins which are quite useful things and I may need them again tomorrow as well. We shall put the bo the bug in there. Amazing this streaming stuff you see. I even get to tidy up on stream. <laughs> oh what was there watching a long time ago? Dan's gaming I think it was. Uh, cleaning his bathroom. I, I didn't watch him do it because as soon as I saw he was cleaning his bathroom, what do I want to watch him cleaning his bathroom for? But something like a thousand people watched him clean his bathroom. I'm trying to give you, I, I must do something about that. Um, <laughs> Moobot's a bit too clever for you just Jessup. <laughs> I can see what you typed but uh... and he did uh, he has a, now of course worked out your earlier message but I can still, I can still uh, see it. I'll, I'll look uh, shortly. Now these are oval jump rings which you probably can't see very well. I will zoom in for this last bit. Where's my camera control? There it is. Why is that? No, we'll look at that later. Zoom in and focus. There we go. About there. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, okay. Now, unfortunately, the, well, yes, true. I was going to say the name comes from the fact that they jump the space between one thing and something else. Um, but uh, yes, you are correct. So these actually work just the same as any other round ones, you just twist them. And we'll put that on there, and we'll put uh, we've got three jump rings. I'm going to make that a bit longer. So I will close this one up. given me three jump rings so as they've given me three jump rings I am going to use them uh, actually they've given me four if I'd realized that hmm. Ooh. 
I only need one jump ring to put the uh, safety chain on, so I shall make a small chain of three jump rings here. And then the clasp. And then close the jump ring. So that's one end. And the other, put that on the other end, and this chain, extender chain, on the end there. And that's it done. So that should be able to just fit anywhere on any of these. Like that. Quite a colourful thing really. And given that it's got an extender on it, it should fit my wrist. I'm not about to try it and fasten it though, I don't think. But uh, there we go. Actually, I suppose it wouldn't look too bad on me. And yes, Junior did have another go at me the other day. Um, thank you very much. And of course, this is the necklace, which then just fastens like that. So, there you go. So we're going out with a necklace. No, I'm not going to try and move in that camera, but there you go. <laughs> Actually, I've got a prototype. Um, uh, I've got a but I'll show you a prototype necklace, which does actually suit me. I know you're half joking, but I'll... back in a second. have here a prototype necklace. Now there's one end of it and there's the other end of it and you might be thinking uh, necklaces why is the two ends because it is a single chain from end to end and then work out which way the camera works but the, um, the thing about this is it's magnetic it sticks together. So um, you can do with that is I fold it in half. I can just do find the right point when it just there you go, it just holds in place. That's a double strand. I can just pull it off. Um, as I was wearing it the other day is it's in a Lavat style. Uh like Lavat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like the old um, cowboys. All right, they wouldn't be wearing crystal jewels, but you know, same sort of idea. Or with this, you can even just wrap it around your wrist um, as a sort of a wrap around. Um, Bracelet's a bit tight on me. Let me loosen that off a bit. There we go, that one. And you can let go so that I can then fasten it.
like that. So that was just that's just something else I've been playing with. There we are. Thank you, Kitsukan. I knew it was something like, <laughs> like that. There we are. Ah, uh, dear. Well, that's because they think I'm, I'm that popular, uh, just Jessup, that they're going to get hundreds of thousands of people clicking on the links. <laughs> but there's yeah, just an, an interesting idea I was playing with. With magnetic um, hematite uh, beads. And uh, it, it, this is just kind of fun to play with anyway. So uh, what was I doing? Yes, I was doing this. You can you can almost, well you can make sort of sculptures out of it as well. You don't want to wear it, no problem. You know, put it on your desk as a sculpture. So it just wraps. Like that. And there you've got a I don't know, pen holder. <laughs> Can't see, can you? Um, where is it? There we go. Camera's upside down, so yeah, just a, a holder for miscellaneous things. Right. Well, talking of the adverts, uh, just Jessup, I've got my own. I've got that one. Sort of. It's amazingly difficult to do this back to front and upside down. That one there, of course. If there is anybody watching that um, doesn't know that I do have a jewellery shop, it's uh, take a look. You might find something that you like. Uh, this might make its way onto it at some point, and maybe some braiding work. I don't know. I'm not sure people would want to uh, pay the amount of money this costs, but. Um, we shall, uh, we shall see. It, it, that sort of thing may find its way on there. Uh, but there's some interesting chainmail uh, aluminium ring jewellery. Really, uh, I think they look nice and pretty. But take a look. Pass it on to friends and family. If you're not interested, not a problem. If you are, order early for Christmas. Because they're all handmade, especially for you. Um, apart from that, what I'm going to do is uh, thank you to everybody that's been watching and interacting this uh, this evening. It has been fun. Tomorrow night we're going to do some more braiding, but with you can tell that's uh, plated. Look, it sticks. It's 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 steel. Um, we're going to do some more uh, uh, beading, but sorry, even more braiding, but with beads. So it'll be a completely different look to that. Uh, so if you uh, would like to follow me, if you're not already following, you'll get the notification when I go live and see that. You may even get to see Junior if he pops in the stream again, as he has done for the past few days, but unfortunately not tonight. If you just like the notification, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Arrogant Art. That is below the stream window in case you forget, um, or it'll be on the end plate in a moment. And Movebot has got perfect timing tonight, hasn't he? And uh, otherwise, if you'd just like to catch me tomorrow, which is my next stream, it will be at 8 p.m. UK time. That's 1900 hours UTC or GMT. They're close enough to be the same thing. Uh, not quite time for the clocks to go back in the UK, but it's not far. Um, uh, otherwise, that's what two hours twenty minutes ago. It was eight o'clock in the UK, so you do the math in your own local time zone, and it'll be that time tomorrow. Thank you all. Thanks, Kitsukin, Aldel H, Just Jessup, and everybody else whose name escapes me at the moment, just because my memory is a little better than a sieve. Thank you all. Have a good evening, and we will see you tomorrow.